So we're going to take a look at how you can create a really simple but robust menu system in PowerShell that you can provide to a user and will help you with flow control in your script. So let's take a look at it real quick after I scroll through all the gobbledygook that I've typed out. You'll see that we have a title here. We have a little message that we provide to the user. By the way, penguins do rule. And then we have the options that they can select. So they can press 1 for 10, 0 for 20, C for ducks. And we also have a default value, which at this time, if they press 0, results, or if they just press enter, will result in selecting uh, the 20. Now you'll also see that we have a little help menu. Let's look at the help menu. And also associated with our options, we have a little help message that we can display. You'll see if you select ducks, it just lets you know that ducks are evil because they are evil. So let's select one of the options. Well, let's let's put in a bunch of gobbledygook. You'll see that if you do not select a proper option, it's just going to keep prompting you. But if you select one like ducks, why would you choose ducks? They're evil. They are. Trust me. Then you can see how this easily allows you to control the flow of your script and you can do different things based on what they select. So let's take a look at the code. It's really simple. Uh, you have a title here, it's a string. We put it in that variable. We have a message here, it's just a string. We put it in that variable. And then we have to create three separate variables for our options and we're using this new object commandlet and then we're pointing to the system.management.automation.host.choice description class and that class has two parameters that we need to provide to it so here's our first one which is 10 and then we have a comma and you can also include a little message to include for the help in that option and we did this for our other options as well as you can see here and you'll also notice that there's an ampersand in our selections here and the ampersand relates to what you would like that user to select in order to choose that option so it takes the value to the right of the ampersand and that value becomes the op the the uh, what they would select your option with so if we come back up here you'll see that they they relate to the value to the right of the ampersand 20 I put it next to 0 C uh, for ducks so once you put those in their own variables you don't have to name it uh, descriptive like that you can use one two three uh, we have to put them in an array and that array has to always also be uh, of the choice description flavor and we're using this type accelerator here and we're putting the brackets inside at the end so that we can say this is going to be an array and we're providing our options and the order is important we'll talk about the order in a second but you separate them by commas and so I have my 10 I have my 20 and I have my ducks I put those options into an, a variable and then we have our three important variables here we have the title we have the message we have the options. So now we're going to use this host variable which has its own properties and methods and we're accessing the prompt for choice method host.ui.prompt for choice and this takes a couple of parameters it takes the title parameter it takes the message parameter and then all those different options get shoved into this place right here and then you'll see there's a number here at the end what does that correlate to that correlates to whatever you would like the default value to be so if I change this to zero and I save it and then I run my menu again uh, if I can find it you'll see that now the first one is highlighted yellow because that is the default value and it tells you here default is one so if I press enter it defaults to that so once you have this string here of, of this bit over here set up you want to put that in a variable as well and what's going to happen it's going to return uh, a, an integer and that integer will be related to the option that they selected and how will you know what that integer relates to well it's based on the order that you place them into this variable over here so if they select the first one 
then it will return a zero. If they select the second one, it will return a one. If they select the third, it will return a two. So now that we know how those choices relate to the integer that will be placed into this result variable, we can do different things um, with that. And one thing we can do is by uh, just plopping it right into this switch statement. So the switch statement can now do different things for us based off of whatever the result is. And I have 0, 1, 2, or 3, or 0, 1, 2. And you'll see that different things happened based off of what I selected there. So I can choose C and it displays ducks are evil. Why would you choose ducks? And so that is how you can use um, choice UI, the prompt for choice, to provide the user a very simple but robust menu in order to control the flow of your scripts and do different things depending on what they select. Now, you'll see that if you run it from inside the console, you get this, this text-based view. But if you run it from inside the ISE, you're going to get a little pop-up. And it's, it's pretty much the same. We have our title here. We have the message. You'll see that if, uh, if I press enter, I think it'll just do the one that's uh, highlighted in blue and I can hover over them and it will display the little help messages. So it's a little bit different depending on where you run it, uh, but it's, it's the same effect. So if I choose that, it's gonna output the same thing. So that is how you can create a really simple menu um, that looks really clean, has a lot of robust functionality and controls helps you control the flow of your scripts. And that's it. Thanks for watching.